Marhaba. Salam alaikum. It's good to have uh, so many people gathered here. Just in a few minutes, I've been chatting with people. I realise I'm uh, the least expert person in the room. So uh, it's great to have people from so many different uh, networks with so many different commitments and relationships which draw together uh, this country um, and the land that many communities call holy. It's great to have you all here today. I hope this is an opportunity to uh, learn from one another, to network and to uh, encourage one another as we move forward from this centenary to uh, something quite different that we are hoping for in the future. Welcome to Israel-Palestine, What Next? Can I thank Richard Cleves and Hybrid Congregational Church for the hospitality to us this morning? It's great to have an event that outgrows its original uh, venue. Uh, thank you to Christchurch. Um, but uh, it's great to be able to uh, come here. Uh, this is just one of the latest examples of Highbury's continuing commitment to the issues under discussion today. So thank you, Richard and Highbury, for all uh, that you do and your commitments uh, that have brought us here today. My name is Nick Davis. I'm Area Dean for the Anglican Deanery of Cheltenham, and it's my privilege to introduce our conference. I first visited Israel and Palestine in 1986. I went as part of a study visit, as part of my biblical studies degree at Sheffield University, the greatest university in the world. Uh, I went with uh, Professor John Rogerson, who some of you may know, and he carefully spent two weeks debunking my naive piety with a fair dose of history and archaeology. And I've been learning, uh, really, ever since. I particularly remember being struck by Haram al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary in the middle of the pavement of the Second Temple. It is, as you will know, the second holiest shrine of Islam, what you may not know is that it houses a wooden crusader screen that was built around the rock at the heart there to stop Christian pilgrims chipping bits off the rock. The rock is, of course, revered by the three great Abrahamic faiths. And I was just struck by how this was uh, a symbol, a sacrament, if you like, of so much of the challenge and opportunity of this place. On my second visit in 2007, I stayed in Bethlehem meeting with Palestinian liberation theologians and exploring with them the modern-day resonances of the Christmas story, of the visit of the wise men and the slaughter of the innocents. In discussion, demonstration and dialogue, we explored who might be the contemporary equivalents of Herod, Caesar and the wise men. Passing through the checkpoints which encircled Bethlehem and assuring uh, the people who were quizzing me behind the blast screens that I wasn't a journalist, I was merely a humble student and hoping they weren't going to look at the hard drive of my camera, um, it became quite clear to me that uh, wise men from the East would struggle to get to the crib uh, today. Most recently, I returned in 2014, and it was my pleasure to meet with Reverend Dr. Fadi Diab and to begin the partnership that St. Philip and St. James Church here in Leckhampton has with St. Andrew's Ramallah. As part of that trip, we visited one of the oldest refugee camps in the world and heard of the hopes for peace despite generations of injustice. And it is that friendship and that enduring partnership with St Andrews, which demands that we should speak out, that I should speak out and come and be part of this event today. And as I look across the hall, it is an encouragement to me, and I hope to our speakers, that so many have come from as far afield as Mull, uh, 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 um, and as well as Cheltenham, um, uh, to come and be part of our uh, conference uh, today. As I have returned to this much-promised land, as I've listened, read, and reflected, it's become clear to me, as a British Christian and church leader, that I am implicated in the events in the Holy Land. It has to do with my historical inheritance. 
that has to do with my theology, how I speak of God and others seeking for God. It has to do with the everyday economics of how people organise pilgrimages to the Holy Land and where that money ends up. It has to do with the wider politics of the region and our ever more globalised society. And I imagine that similar thoughts and similar journeys have brought you here today as well. As we gather on this 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration, we remember its twin promises, and I quote, a national home for the Jewish people, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done that may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. That declaration was, of course, just one moment in history, a statement informed by previous events, informed by received theology, and by the British government's geopolitical needs at the time. But it is also a declaration which we know was only ever half realised, and that may well have been its intention from the start. The implications of those contradictory promises and the events which flowed from them are felt today on the streets of Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Ramallah, Nablus, across the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And as we know, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat its mistakes. Our conference today aims to address that historic deficit and the injustices which it has engendered in the region today. As such, we wish to highlight the plight of Palestinians, to acknowledge the moral responsibility of Britain in the current state of affairs, and to respond to the call of the churches in the Holy Land to address these issues. We also hope, through the tapestry exhibition, to appreciate something of the richness of Palestinian culture. We are not here today to question the right of the State of Israel to exist, but we do believe that Palestinians have an equal right to self-determination. In organising this event, we were keen to have voices from the three great Abrahamic faiths, each inviting us to learn the lessons of history. We are not wishing to turn the clock back, but rather to call for the restoration of human rights for all, for an end to violence, for policies which promote peace, security and economic flourishing for all rather than for the few. Only in this way can a just and lasting peace be known and felt by all who call this land holy, whether they be Muslim, Jew or Christian. Thank you for coming today and for joining the conversation which will emerge as our day continues. Thank you too for your commitment to that vision. We want to begin this morning with a brief video presentation produced by the Balfour Project which should hopefully give us something of the uh, historical background and ensure that we all have a starting point for the conversations which follow. <laughs> 